Well, hello. Good to see you this morning. Thanks for joining us on U Boat Submarine Simulator. This is me with the pipe, your captain this morning. And hosting is Gene Hart. And welcome to my channel. What I'd like to talk about is some of the, the nuances and tips to playing in first person. So first person perspective, the play is a little different than when you uh, normally play the game um, with the uh, sectional and uh, where the sub itself breaks up in different sections you can move about that way. First per person is uh, this perspective gives you a little bit more uh, immersion. Uh, a lot of people uh, really enjoy this perspective for the immersion. But you're limited, and um, you know you're limited to uh, your own shoes in a sense, where you can't get get out and look around. Uh, overall, you're kind of in the first person mode. But that is not necessarily true. There are um, some keyboard commands that are used. There's four of them. There's quite a few of them, but there's four keyboard commands that I use over and over again, repeatedly in first person. And uh, one of them is to set me free. I will use the uh, end key. And right now I'm in the first person view of one of the officers. And in this case, the captain himself. And you notice there's no user interface. That's the U key. And I really like walking around first person without interface until I need it. So the U key is one of the things that uh, I use quite frequently. And then when I need to interface, I'll uh, click the U and the game will come back on again. But it's kind of a late evening and I just top down. Uh, that was an edit, not so much a teleport. Don't be frightened, it's not a teleport. But pressing the U key, I can get up my uh, my icons, my user interface, and you'll find that you'll be spending a lot of time in the map mode because all the icons for your commands are available to you in the map mode. It really isn't that much different if you are accustomed to playing this game. Uh, there's so many videos out on, on gameplay and tutorials and for new players. I'm not trying to repeat that. I'm just giving you some of the little tips I'm using in first person perspective. And I really enjoy uh, this first-person perspective, turning off the user interface using the U key and, and walking about and seeing things as uh, a submarine would see it. And then just the Alt key uh, is another good key that I use quite a bit. It brings up uh, the interface uh, with the icon so you can get right down and, and use some of those things on the map. Uh, if you have the U key depressed, then the Alt key won't do anything for you that you can see. So you kind of have to use those in combination. You'll get used to it uh, when you use the U to take off the interface and when you use the U to put it back on, then the Alt key to pop it, pop it up and uh, be able to use those commands. And then the fourth, uh, the other key that, oh, I said there was four, there's actually more. This tab key uh, is really nice because it allows you to bring up all the officers at, at any point of view without having to look at the map and, and give individual commands. But one of the things I find about U-Boat is what's a feature is the crew management and the machinery management. And if you see what I'm doing here is I'm actually commanding somebody, one of the sailors, to hit the machinery by using the left bar. Yeah, well. I hit the tab and you get that left bar. You can do all that machinery stuff, in this case the compressor, uh, not, the, not the compressor, but the uh, pump. So that officer is using the pump to dry out and this saves you a lot of trouble for running around and doing all these all these things yourself. I don't know if 
uh, that was the intention, but uh, as a captain, I don't want to be running back all the way back to the compressor, turning it on, and turning on the pump, and looking at the gyroscope. It's very easy to use these keyboard commands by hitting the tab key, bring up the left bar, and having the sailor do it for you. And you can see that sailor right there with the pump. I also had them before that turn turn off the red, turn on the blue, and turn the red light back on again. All that done by a sailor, so I don't have to run back there and do it myself. So these uh, keys, and then you can actually just mouse over in the map view. You'll see all your officers, and you can you can uh, select one of them. And once you do that, you can go into his uh, actual uh, first person perspective, or in this case, hit tab and work it. So you can either work it from the bottom, as many of you already know this, or you can work it uh, where you uh, give commands to individual officers to do select jobs. Most of this stuff ends up being kind of an annoyance uh, for me to always be telling my officers to do what they ought to know what to do. And so we take care of that in the crew management screen, uh, which we'll get to here in a minute. But there are occasions where you may have to uh, give a command, which is okay, uh, directly to an officer. You will see that most of the ship commands are done up here in the right-hand corner by selecting, you know, your, uh, your depth. But this hydrophone icon, that is a wonderful thing. It gives you six different things. You select hydrophone, it will take you down. It'll take you down 50 meters to do the hydrophone check. You'll be down there for five minutes, and then you'll blow the ballast, and then it will come up, and the diesel engines will come on, and, and then after you're on the surface, a command will be given for the compressors to, to regain the air supply. All that, all that is done for you once you give that one command. All those commands are built in. That's a beautiful thing, especially in first-person perspective, but in any perspective. Wechseln auf E-Motor! So as you can see, uh, getting on the periscope when you're diving to 50 meters doesn't make any sense, but uh, you can you can move around the first person, jump onto the uh, the scope and get off, move around. One of my favorite stations is this one right here, across from the uh, attack meter. scope. Uh, I don't know if I said the gyroscope. Excuse me, I meant uh, attack periscope. But this station here is fabulous. It, uh, it gives you a lot of information on what's going on in the sub, including a compass. Now, the compass is difficult to see in the normal perspective, so hitting the end key gives you free cam. That end key and free cam is a beautiful thing. It allows you to, to see just about anything you need to see uh, the way you want to see it. Uh, and so I find 50. that first person perspective I'll be using the end key quite often to get myself uh, uh, different types of views to help me in my immersion. You know, it's kind of strange. Since your, your body isn't actually on a sub, uh, immersion isn't always just about having that first person view. Uh, I think seeing the externals of the sub and getting a perspective from outside broadens the overall experience and, and helps with the immersion. Many may not agree with that, but you know, uh, I, uh, I do like seeing external views. So I'll show you some of those here in a minute. But climbing down from the conning tower down into the control room, uh, you know, hitting the navigation of map puts you in the navigational mode, which doesn't show anything. So you always have to go to the map. I just go to the station, then I'll hit the icon to bring up the map. Uh, I wish it wasn't that way. I wish there was at least one of the maps on the navigational table that took you to navigational mode and another one that took you into the map mode. So you're not always using icons. So the, the more things you can do live on the sub uh, without icons, the better, but hey. Um, that was kind of a skimpy <laughs> alarm bell, but you notice I, I, uh, I sounded the alarm um, and you can do that by using icons, or you can do that with the uh, with the speed gauge and um, the telegraph, and just hit the icon, and the alarm will sound. 
and you'll have everybody uh, available. This guy here, uh, he reminds me of Amos from the TV show Expanse. I may have to rename him. But notice that these sailors here have no collar, but I address my officers with collars, even if it's a pullover type of collar, you know, like this guy has and the other officers. That has nothing to do with historic stuff or anything that I know. It's just what I do to help me identify my own crew is I put all my officers in some sort of collar. If, not, if they're not in that kind of collar and they're in a jacket or a regular shirt, uh, but there, I think uh, my captain, uh, he may be in a pullover turtleneck, but he's wearing a jacket. Uh, we'll take a look at it and make sure of that later. But uh, nevertheless, there's some kind of collar to me that signifies it's an officer. It's just what I do, something that uh, helps me on uh, who's who. Uh, this button here Torpedo course is the way you're going to select an officer to do the calculations. There's so much on the web, YouTube, on how to do calculations manually. I'm not here for that. Um, that's good. I think everybody needs to learn that stuff and, and be good at using the TDC or, or how to calculate the, a ship speed and direction, course, and, and, and of course the angle on bow. You should know all that. But once you know all that, uh, I, as a captain, I like my officers to do that and let them do the calculation. And the way to do that is, uh, instead of manually, is to select them the way we did right here. So, so far, I've talked about the, using these icons to, you know, it's first person perspective. Don't be afraid of it. It's actually very easy to get accustomed to and, and used to. Uh, the only thing you're really giving up is the um, sectional view of the sub where you can move back and forth. And I found myself really too dependent on moving back and forth to the sub to see what's going on, where this kind of limits you to that first person perspective. And, and I don't find myself roaming about the sub so much, but... Uh, just about everything you can do, you'll get used to doing it in the first person perspective. And you notice as we uh, come back up again, uh, the command was given without me having to do it to recharge the, uh, the air compressors. So we get air back up in the sub. And of course the command for switching over to diesels, all that's been taken care of automatically. So we do have a ship out there, and wechseln auf Dieselmotor. Yeah, and, and so we're we're back on diesels, and we're on the surface. Our sailors are going to get up and go about other business now. Got to keep an eye on my officers. They don't know what to do with themselves. One of the uh, one of the quirks of the game is uh, once in a while, uh, two of the sailors, whether they're officers or regular sailors, it doesn't matter. They they uh, they get in each other's way and they just keep walking into each other and they get stuck. Um, in fact, in first person perspective, if you go to the back, all the way in the back aft of the submarine uh, by the compressors, and you head forward. You'll have a couple, Stella, Stella. I think it's in the back, and maybe from the front. You'll have a couple sailors sitting on their bunks uh, across from each other, leaning forward, and you can't get by them. <laughs> it's, it's very annoying. They're both leaning into each other, and uh, they're not touching, but you can't walk past them. I don't know, some of you may experience that already. So clicking on any officer, uh, and then clicking on the that map button uh, will bring you into, at, when you're in the map, out of the map, into their perspective. And then you can go about whatever. So one of the things you can do is you can actually send your officer to a 
particular station if you don't want to climb the ladder yourself. And then once it gets there, then you can you know, watch them on the map. And then uh, when he appears to be on station, you can go. Now, hitting the end key um, would take you into that compass. I didn't do that uh, this time. But um, you would see there was a compass up there on the bridge. And it's very difficult to see unless you hit the end key. And even then, uh, the reason why I didn't bother showing it to you is because the, the, the waves are so much that the, the compass was just waving back and forth too much to get a good look at it down below. Um, once again, uh, you can always click on this icon to bring up the ship information on the bottom left corner. And, and then, uh, you know, hit that button there to select an officer who is uh, the one on watch or the one on hard your phones, depending on which way, and then they'll start the calculations. And what's interesting is that, you know, um, you'll see here, you can do these manually, uh, but I hadn't done anything yet. And 25% of collecting the, the data, you know, course and direction, the speed, uh, that's all being done by my officer. Now, if you want to do it yourself, you know how to do it. It's very easy. You click on each of those icons in, that, in this thing, and then when you're ready and you got all the information, or you can use this TDC mod. It's strange because these three items of information are the same as these three items up and down on TDC mod. The, the only difference is the officer in, on the scope is going to be calling out the information as he sees it. And the officer at the computer desk or the TDC is going to be inputting what's called out there. You know, and so that's really what's happening uh, on a sub. So whether you put it in below uh, while you're on the scope or you put it in the TDC, it's just whether you're playing one office or the other. To me, I, I don't, you know, uh, the TDC looks fancy, looks beautiful, it's a replica, uh, but also the scope is doing just what the person on the scope is supposed to be doing, and that is calling out this information. So, in a sense, it's all the same information. Whether you're, the information is being inputted at the scope or if you're putting the information in the TDC mod or you select this icon and you have one of your officers count, do the calculations. The truth is they take a while to do it. Maybe you can do it faster yourself. That's not the case. Um, that's normally the case, but um, you see down here it shows a percentage of probability. That's not the same as whether he's got all the information. He may have all the information, but percentage of probability increases as the ship comes closer to a, a decent angle on bow. The wider the angle on bow, uh, the probability goes down. The less of an angle, more perpendicular you are, the higher the probability of a good hit. So that probability will, you watch it as it increases, and, uh, and that, that's really what you're looking at. So once again, that's my thoughts on the uh, onboard computer for the torpedoes, the TDC. Um, either method, both methods, you know, uh, using the scope and inputting the information there, or using the TDC. In reality, somebody would be out the scope calling out information and a person at the lieutenant at the TDC would be inputting what was called out. So however you want to play it, uh, I like to play it from a uh, captain's perspective. Uh, uh, I'll look in the scope myself, uh, uh, for, but I really do enjoy allowing the, the, uh, the officers to do those calculations and I keep my mind on the overall bigger picture of what's going on. I do find that the yellow filter uh, sometimes is the best in, in uh, kind of a maybe a night and even foggy situation. And uh, but you have to you have to flip around depending on the kind of daylight you have.
but uh, sometimes I put my first officer on the attack scope. But preferably, uh, well, it turns out that this is a friendly ship. This is Norwegian. And so we won't be uh, taking anything down today, but we'll go through the motions for the practice that my officers practice doing the calculations. And you can see that I got the first officer out on watch and, uh, and I'm looking through the scope. Uh, but if we were submerged, um, what, I, what I would do is uh, I'll take the attack scope and, and uh, allow a first officer to go ahead and, and look through the observation scope. Um, I don't know in, in practice and historically whether or not that was ever done, I have no idea. But I know in the game, it, it speeds up the whole calculation process. You know, maybe somebody can comment on how that how that actually worked. Well, there's going to be a lot of flipping back and forth between the first person view and, and the map. And, uh, unfortunately, I mean, I think this is one of the, the downfalls of the game is there's no no feature uh, to eliminate the the ships on map view. Here I hit the, uh, the tab key to bring up the left hand button north of command, the left hand slide of, uh, slide bar that has all the commands. And, uh, that's really the way I, I like to uh, get all the sailors up and going. Um, and then this little uh, hover here on the bottom right tells you what sailors are available, you know, uh, 10 out of 18, and, and you can see who they are and who they're reporting to and what they're doing. Uh, I find that extremely handy, especially in the first person perspective. The menu too, um, uh, a kind of all the good information that is uh, on, only get in the map view. And then the, the crew tab, um, there's so much out there on how to do crew management, but I figured I won't go into so much explanation, but I would put it up here so you can see what I'm doing. I have two shifts. I get rid, of, get rid of that third shift, and then I take my officers. The sailors are on the two, sh uh, would be on those two shifts, the top two rows, and then uh, and then the sailors are alternating, and then I'll, I'll, I'll I take my officers and I'll alternate them. There are officers uh, that I have uh, grayed out. That means they free to do what they want, and usually they they go to work. Um, you know, if, they're, if they feel like they have plenty of rest, they'll go to work. And so that's one way of overlapping officers instead of, you know, uh, one officer going down and another one getting up. I, I do like the, the idea of them being overlapped. The chief um, engineer, you know, I, I, I feel he needs to have uh, two sailors with him most of the time. And then I just give one sailor to each of the officers and then that does a good job balancing uh, all of the sailors and keeping them all occupied and keeping all the officers up to task uh, automatically where I'm not having to micromanage and send all the stuff around. But um, setting the task here, I look this is what I do so you can look at it and uh, kind of glean from it if you want. I had just got myself uh, extra officers, so I got uh, six officers, I think. And uh, at some point I like to get seven. Now, I want a navigator. And what you want in setting up the officers, you want uh, three particular items. Now, you can see that my radio guy, I couldn't get another... Uh, lead officer, so I got a radio, a uh, second radio guy, and I put him on navigation, high priority of 12, he's the top there, uh, um, Myers. I don't think that works uh, in uh, going through it. Um, if an officer doesn't have navigation as a job task, setting in a high priority, I think, does nothing. But I wanted to experiment with that and see what happens, and so far, as far as I can tell, it doesn't do anything. He won't do that task. It's only for leads. Now, um, navigation is important. And so 
uh, when setting up your officers, always con and setting up the the schedule, consider on each shift three things as priority. A, 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 na a navigation always needs to be done. Radio, you're going to always need to have somebody on the radio, and you're always going to need to have somebody on watch. So depending on whether you're submerged or up above, uh, you want officers uh, with the capabilities to cover those three things. And so it looks like uh, on, the, on one shift I have navigation covered, on the second shift maybe uh, I got an officer split between navigation and watch, and, um, and uh, that's, that's problematic. So my next officer will be a lead officer, so I can always have somebody doing navigation. Uh, to me, it's important enough. Now, you can see that a lot of people say don't put any priority for sailors on the scope. And so between the officers and then the crew, if you take off uh, any priority and leave it blank for the scope, uh, and that has been suggested by many uh, people who uh, have done crew management tutorials. And what I find is that you can see here that Myers has no navigational skills, so I don't think uh, putting them on navigation does anything. And neither does the other radio guy. So I find only the lead guys do. But back to the, uh, the, the sailors, not wanting any sailors on the scope and only officers on the scope. In practice, I find that doesn't work. Just because there's no priority given to a sailor to be on the scope, if you give an officer who's on watch and you give him a sailor, that sailor will get on the scope. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I've given the chief officer two sailors and all the other officers one sailor. So you're always going to find uh, the probability that you might have a sailor on the observation scope, whether you like it or not. Um, you know, if you find that you're not sure about whether the, the sub needs to bilge pumped out, just go ahead and bring up the tab, hit the tab key and bring up that sidebar and have it pumped. You know, and uh, that's what I just did. No respect for an officer. That sailor just plowed right through me. Uh, yeah, we're dry and the pump is running because I had a sailor uh, turn that on, but I just turned it off. Um, usually you don't have to bother with that. It'll, it'll turn off on its own uh, after a while. What else do I want to say? Uh, you know, there's a lot out there on uh, crew management. Uh, but like I said, you can look at the way I set up my crew management without me talking about the, the details of it. Uh, and, you know, at the, I find the only way is to do it, set yourself up, don't worry about it, set up your priorities for the sailors and for the officers, see how it goes, take a look at what other people say, take a look at how I set mine up. To, there's no place that you can go, well, that's not true either. This cabinet here is a storage cabinet, and it, it only, well, what I like to say is the storage cabinet shows you what's in the cabinet and it shows you your officer who's ever looking in it. The only, there is a place, if you go to the, the main storage cabinet back by the cook, it'll give you the ability to look at what's in the other storage areas around the boat. But, you know, take a look here. Um, I wanted to make him a medic or give him a medic pack, and there isn't one here. I'm thinking about giving him a, a rebreather type of thing, but uh, maybe not. Uh, let's get him the medic pack. So, before we do, let's take a go forward uh, while we're up here. I wanted to show you this. You can always look at the status of the, of the uh, torpedoes by having one of your guys in first person perspective, go forward and take a look and it shows you the torpedo status, which is kind of nice. And as we walk through the, uh, the boat, head on back a little bit. 
Wir sind schon so lange auf See. Ich halte es nicht mehr aus. And then here we go. So, at this storage cabinet, not only can we give him a medic pack, just one. I think one is all he can take. You can also see that the, uh, the ability to move things to the other storage cabinets are, are available. So, um, one of those things that uh, I think almost all the other tutorial tutorials would cover for you. But that does give you the ability to look at all the storage spots. Another uh, key, besides the ones we've talked about, first person perspective, that's helpful is the F key. Uh, by pressing the F key, you can turn on the flashlight and see a little better. And then the ventilation. One of the things uh, I got to say that I'm kind of shorthanded in is I had not experienced damage uh, after a couple of patrols and being new to U-Boat as a game, um, what it was like in first person perspective to handle uh, damage control. So that would be uh, maybe a future video, I don't know, but uh, something to think about. Let's just go ahead and move over to the captain's perspective. And uh, look at uh, some of the some of the things here. Now, notice that the crew and journal, each of those tasks are, are under the menu. I rather there were icons up top, you know. But it, when you want to look at the journal, of course, you can go to the captain's bunk and look at the journal there. Uh, but first person perspective, there's no icon that takes you right to the journal. I wish there was, and there's no icon that takes you to the crew menu, and I, I think there should be. Maybe some modder will put that in. Uh, I'd rather that than right now there's two icons, one for reputation and, and one for your budget. Those two icons I would relegate to the menu because I don't use them a actively out at sea as much as back at port, and I would prefer uh, the, the crew and journal work or icons on that bar. Uh, a skill, and I'll end with this, the, this one skill that uh, a lot of people talk about torpedo and TBC, but not many people talk about charting skills. There's a lot of charting skills that need to be covered, but I want to cover one, uh, and that is drawing parallel lines. Drawing parallel lines is a very important skill to have. Uh, you can, and I just arbitrarily drew one up top and drew another one. I think that looks pretty parallel. But if you draw an intersecting line, it doesn't matter what angle it is, whether it's kind of off or in this case north south, uh, it doesn't have to uh, be directly north south. The angle is of the intersecting line, whatever it is, you measure it like this using the uh, protractor. Once you find that angle, between the intersecting line and the course of the target ship, which is that top line. Uh, then you can use the Alt key to grab uh, one of the points. If you didn't know that, I just learned that myself. You use the Alt key to grab a point and drag down. And then when you drag that down now, you can then set up the exact same angle. and. You know, once we find the same angle, we notice that we're not quite there uh, with our eyeballing, and we can make an exact representation now on the map, and they're, they're parallel. Now, there is um, some tools we can use uh, to figure out what course that is, depending on whether you're going to the east or to the west. Uh, but, you know, the compass, the compass uh, where well, the protractor tool can be used to determine that uh, with the north south, direct north south and then use the protractor. But that detail I'll show uh, uh, probably in another video. Uh, and if you, one of the things uh, that's a disappointment is there's, there's no feature for no 
ship contact on the map. You know, we always see the ships kind of a cheap. But that's what I have for you today. Thanks for joining and see you next time.